Hello and welcome to Spread Book Joy. Today I'm doing my first ever book haul video and a visit to Waterstones of Gower Street in London. If you're new to the channel, I'm Jack, a qualified primary school teacher who likes to recommend really good books for kids for home or school, but also I talk about my own reading. So today I'm doing my first ever book haul video. Um, I haven't bought lots and lots of books for a long time because I've been saving up my pennies for the first time I get to visit a bookshop. I was shielding for most of the year with my partner, so we didn't go shopping at all. And most of my book buying has been online which really means that my book choices have been dictated by algorithms and YouTube and social media and what else is out in the media. And you just miss out on the opportunity to browse and find things that you wouldn't have known existed. So, and just the pleasure of being in a bookshop. Bookshops are my happy place like they are for most bookworms and yeah, just the joy of going to bookshops again. But I had an opportunity this week to visit one of my favourite bookshops, one I used to work at actually, at Waterstones of Gower Street, which is one of the biggest bookshops in London. It's not the biggest Waterstones or the biggest bookshop, but it's one of the biggest and it's very, very famous. It's been there for a very long time. It used to be Dylan's of Gower Street and a long time ago I used to work there. So when I was at university, I worked for Waterstones. Before I went to university, I was a Waterstones bookseller and I wanted a part-time job while I was at uni. So I transferred from my branch where I had a full-time job to Gower Street and at that time it was still Dylan's of Gower Street and it had been um, uh, taken over by Waterstones and, and bought by them and there's no more Dylan's. Dylan's Dylan's is not a brand anymore in, in the UK, it used to be, and they took it over. So when I arrived there as a transfer for a Saturday job, um, it was still Dylan's and over the next month it was refurbished and became Waterstones and they kept a lot of the traditions that the shop was famous for. It's right in central London in the University District, well basically University of London District and they have surrounded by universities and colleges and students so Dylan's used to stock lots and lots of secondhand textbooks. They would buy secondhand books off the students and sell them on to other students. So Waterstones have kind of kept that tradition going on. And I love that shop. It's a really beautiful shop. It's a beautiful old building. It reminds me of happy times and my university days. It's a really old building, so it's full of nooks and crannies. It's like five floors. Anyway, enough talking about it. I'm going to show you it. But if you want to see a better video, I took some footage from my vlog, which I did last week, which I'll put a card up for you if you haven't seen it. I took the footage as part of my vlog and my vlog was already getting too long. so. I thought I'll just make a video, another video of the bookshop visit. So there's not a lot of footage and it's my first time taking footage out and about so it was a bit odd, I felt a bit self-conscious. But if you want a really good video of Waterstones of Gower Street, um, David's book reviews, so his channel, um, he's got a visit, he did a visit to Waterstones of Gower Street recently as well and his video is great, he takes you all around and shows you lots of things, mainly sci-fi graphic novels and horror because that's his, what he's into. Um, and I only, I only spent an hour there myself so I only visited um, the sci-fi, fantasy and children's and YA sections so that's all that's shown in this part but you'll get to see the downstairs and the entrance and some of the secondhand books because there's some lovely vintage secondhand books a uh, big selection of vintage penguins which are lovely so yeah I'm going to show you the footage so enjoy my little trip and when you come back I'll share what I bought
so the plan was that when I went in, I would definitely want to buy some books that I wouldn't have bought had I not gone to the bookshop. So books that I wouldn't have seen or thought about or seen online or I've not heard of basically and that caught my eye in the bookshop. And there are several, now they might be books that you know, but they were new books to me. There are some books as well that I've wanted for a while and they were on um, buy one, get one half price. So let's start with those. So they were buy one, get one half price in the children's section. And the first one I got is Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol. If you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that I raved about A Kind of Spark, which was her debut novel last year. Elle, McNich Elle McNichol is a neurodivergent author and she wrote about um, a, ch a girl an autistic girl last year in her first novel and it was one of the best middle grade books I read last year and I absolutely loved it. So this is her new book and um, it's about, uh, I'll read you the blurb. When Cora meets Adrian, she isn't looking for a new best friend. She doesn't want to explain that she's different, but Adrian surprises her. And soon she's drawn into a whirlwind of fun, adventure and true friendship and into the world of the mysterious Pomegranate Institute. Cora becomes captivated by Pomegranate's hologram technology that can bring people back to life. But there are secrets lurking beneath the surface that threaten everything she knows to be true. Can Cora fight to make her voice heard and not lose sight of herself? So. I didn't really know what this was about. I just picked it up because I love the author so much and I was, I was desperate to get her next book and I've wanted this for a while. So that was one of my buy one, get one half price. The next buy one, get one half price was Darwin's Dragons, which I've wanted for a while as well by Lindsay Galvin. Look at that beautiful cover. I'll just read you the blurb of that. 1835, cabin boy Sims Covington is on the voyage of a lifetime to the Galapagos Islands with the world famous scientist Charles Darwin. But when Sims falls overboard during a huge storm, he washes up on an unexplored island. Stranded there, he makes a discovery that could change the world. Now it's not just his own survival at stake, the future of an undiscovered species is in his hands. So amazing. From the same publisher, Chicken House Books, in fact, these publishers, these are from Chicken House and these are from Knights Of and they're both really interesting publishers. Knights Of is an excellent um, publisher. They're really trying to uh, print books, own voices books and diverse authors and, and actually diversify their team that's buying the books. Really interesting um, publisher. They've also, oh, they've also got a bookshop in Brixton which I really want to visit. Um, and this is Chicken House Books. Chicken House Books are one of my favourite children's publishers and they publish Kieran Millwood Hargrave's books and um, Just Binder Billen's books. And they're a really good publisher and they always take such great care of their covers. So the next book is a Chicken House book and it's Morgana Mage in the Robotic Age. And it's basically um, a witch story. So Morgana Mage is a witch um, in the future, which is a really different spin on it. So um, one of my favourite Instagram book reviewers is Picture Book Snob and she reviewed this book on her Instagram. I'll, I'll link her account in the description box below but you should check her out, she has some amazing recommendations. And the final middle grade that I got was this one, The Valley of Lost Secrets by Leslie Parr whose book I've seen reviewed everywhere and I think it's going to be very special. It's a middle grade second world war book which I absolutely love that as a as a book type, they're so good, um, and it's supposed to be beautiful. So September 1939, when Jimmy is evacuated to a small village in Wales, it couldn't be more difficult, difficult, more different from London. Green, quiet, and full of strangers, he instantly feels out of place, but then he finds a skull hidden in a tree, and suddenly the valley is more frightening than the war. Who can Jimmy trust? His brother is too little, his best friend has changed. Finding an ally in someone he never expects, they set out together to uncover the secrets that lie within the skull. What they discover will change Jimmy and the village forever. I also bought some picture books and I wanted to pick up one that I'd not heard of or not read and I didn't have long in the picture book section. Uh, I did pick up one I've wanted for a while and how beautiful is this? This is um, Melissa Castrillon who is one of my I think she's actually my favourite illustrator, if I'm honest. She did a beautiful book called Mighty Min and another one called The Balcony that I own. She also uh, designed the covers for Michelle Harrison's Pinch of Magic series, which um, I was so excited when I saw she was the illustrator for those. And yeah, this is another of her beautiful, beautiful books. It's called Can You Keep a Secret? Um, and it's all about a girl who meets a dragon. And if you met a dragon, would you keep a secret uh, if you met these fabulous creatures? The other picture book I bought was There Is A Tribe Of Kids. So it's a book I've not heard of before, but it is a medal winner. Um, and it's a, it read the, it won the Kate Greenaway medal in 2017. So some people might be well aware of this and I'm not. It's by Lane Smith. And it's, I love collective nouns for 
you know, groups of animals. And that's what this is. Look how beautiful these illustrations are. So this child is going on around and he's looking, so there's a colony of penguins and there was a smack of jellyfish. Did you know they were called a smack? I didn't know that. But there was a growth of plants. There was a pile of rubble. I just love that. And I know kids always get really excited when you talk about collective nouns for things, and I do anyway. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful book. I'm sure there's more to it than that. I haven't had a chance to sit down and look through it properly, but that was my purchase that I wouldn't have made if I hadn't gone to the bookshop. And lastly, I bought some books in the YA section. And uh, there were two. Well, no, there's two that I didn't know about and two that I did. Of the two that I did know about, this is one that I've wanted for a while since it came out. I think it only came out this month or last month. Again, it was reviewed on Picture Book Snob and it's Akala's first fiction book. I believe it's his first fiction book. So Akala, if you're not familiar with him, is one of my absolute favorite people. Um, I'm very inspired by him. He is a musician and activist and he has, he's written a book called Natives, which I read a number of years ago now, and it's all about um, the effects of colonization and the class system on uh, people in the UK and growing up biracial in the 80s, um, and the effects of colonization still, and racism still impacting, like systemic racism and how it affects him and affects all of us actually and where it stems from in the UK very much focused on the UK and empire and class and it, it, it's a fantastic book I learned a lot reading it so Akala's just written his first ever fiction book and it's for young adults um, and he also works on uh, promoting Shakespeare in schools and making Shakespeare accessible for young people, I believe. I might have that wrong, but I know that he does a lot, an awful lot of work to promote that. And this is a book that is set in Tudor times. And he also wanted to write a book where it acknowledged that there were black people in Britain at that time, because one of the questions he was asked is, you know, were there any black people around in Shakespeare's time? And so he's written a book um, which, where the character is a person of color and in Shakespearean times, and it says, a pickpocket with an exceptional gift, a prisoner of extraordinary value, an orphan haunted by dreams of the mysterious dark lady. Um, it's here, Henry is an orphan, an outsider, and a thief. He's also a 15-year-old invested with magical powers. This brilliant, at times brutal, first novel from the amazing imagination that is Akala will glue you to your seat as you are hurled into a time when London stank and boys like Henry were forced to find their own route through the tangled streets and out the other side. This is an adventure like no other. Which sounds massively exciting. I love the cover. Under the cover, look, hidden treasure. I love it. Another book that I hadn't heard of before I went in there, at least I don't think I have. Um, yeah, it just, it seemed new to me. I don't know if it's a new book, I'm not sure when it was published, but I'm gonna say I picked this up for the cover alone and I didn't actually even read the blurb. I picked this up just based on the cover, which I've never done before. Um, so it's called We Were Wolves. It's by Jason Cockcroft and it's a YA book. And on the back it says, without me knowing it, these wolves that were asleep underground were waking up and soon they'd be clawing their way out into the sunlight and it was too late to stop them now. So the blurb says, the boy lives in a caravan on his own in the woods. His dad, John, is in prison but promises he'll be out soon. All the boy needs to do is survive alone for a little while longer, but dark forces are circling like the bad man he's been warned about who arrives asking questions and the rucksack the boy must keep hidden and maybe, just maybe, more ancient forces that have lain asleep for an age. I mean, just look how beautiful is that cover. And I have got a thing about wolf stories, so I just, I'm hoping there's wolves in it. Um, but look at this, look, it's illustrated. So I had to get this one. A book that I wasn't planning on picking up, that I picked up purely from going in, uh, another one is this. Look how beautiful this is. And it's a signed copy, which I quite like a signed copy if you can get them. Um, but it's by Case and Calendar and it's called Felix Ever After. And I just want to show you this. Look at that. Nice spread sprayed edge, nice spread going on. Um, how beautiful is that? I don't know why it's not all the way round though. That's pretty annoying, but I appreciate it anyway. So this is uh, a 
trans love story why a trans love story it's easier sometimes to love when you know it's a love you can't have felix love has never been in love and yes he's painfully aware of the irony he desperately wants to know what it's like and why it seems so easy for everyone but him to find someone what's worse is that even though he is proud of his identity felix also secretly fears that he's one marginalization too many black queer and transgender to ever get his own happily ever after when an anonymous, when an anonymous, I can't say the word anonymous for some reason. When an anonymous <laughs> student begins sending him transphobic messages after publicly posting Felix's dead name alongside images of him before he transitioned, Felix comes up with a plan for revenge. But what he didn't count on, his catfish scenario landing, it, landing him in a quasi love triangle. But as he navigates his complicated feelings, Felix begins a journey of questioning and self discovery that helps redefine his most important relationship how he feels about himself. Felix Ever After is an honest and layered story about identity, falling in love, and recognizing the love you deserve. Which sounds wonderful. So I'm very excited about this one. This next book is so beautiful, and it's by one of someone who's become one of my favorite authors, and that's Kieran Millwood Hargrave, and it's called The Deathless Girls. And just look at how pretty this cover is. I'm just gonna just just look, and it's got the sprayed edge, the spread. And if I take the jacket off, I'm just gonna see how stunning this is. This is her YA novel. I've got I've only read her middle grade. Oh no, I read an adult book by her this year which was stunning. Look at this. Oh, just love just love attention to detail on books. Like it just makes me so happy. I mean it, it's gotta be a good story as well obviously don't get me wrong. Um all the covers in the world are not gonna save a bad book. But just look how beautiful those end papers are. I think this is quite possibly what, the most beautiful book I've bought in a long time and it's a signed edition. Her writing is just beautiful. Now I'm very much a plot driven person. I'm not a, a hugely, I'm not hugely into flowery language or literary language and I, I can appreciate it but I really want the story the story is what matters to me but her writing I it just brings me so much joy it's just beautiful it's very lyrical like there's something about the quality of her writing which just this makes me spellbound so I'm gushing about her some people might not like her writing I don't know but I just I just find it really special so I'm just going to read you a tiny amount um I won't read you the blurb I'm just going to read you the opening so it's not very big and it just says aftermath there is a time here called aftermath after the settled have pulled their harvest from the ground and long bound and placed it in the dark stores shored against rats by cats starved in narrow houses where they fight and mate and sleep until they are loosed after the turning seasons light the trees red gold in the cold, the ground hardening underfoot, wrinkling with frost, after the snow comes like a heavy smothering blanket pillowing the mountains and setting off the soft fury of avalanches, finding the cracks in rocks and splitting them easy as the seeds that are deeply furrowed in the stilled earth, after the melt and pivot of another year, after all this comes the aftermath. The first green moments of a new harvest, the emergence of the slow work happening beneath the thawing soil, for the settled, it is a heralding of the work to come, always the same, sure as seasons. For us, it is the time to move on. The aftermath has just started that year when the soldiers came through the narrow mountain pass, up through the coppery trees, and onto this land we lived upon but laid no claim to. It was a beginning into which they arrived, bringing with them the end. So I have got some other books that I bought recently. I bought them from the Inquisitive Goblin and I've talked about them in a previous video, but it's a great shop for if you're in the UK for secondhand books. They specialize in sci-fi and fantasy and horror. However, they also do other books as well. I've noticed some crime on there and whatever they've managed to get their hands on, but it's a small UK book by, uh, bookseller. So if you can support them, please do. And I love a secondhand book and I love classic fantasy. So the next few books, uh, a few things I'm just gonna show you are, they had the entire Belgariad which is a five book series by David Eddings. Epic high fantasy, starts with Pawn of Prophecy. Um, you know, it's proper swords and sorcery and I've wanted it for ages. I've only ever read book one. I read it some time ago, um, but yeah, we've got Pawn of Prophecy. Uh, this isn't in order, that is the first book, but then we've got, oh yeah, look, book two, Queen of Sorcery. Um, book three, which is The Magician's Gambit. 
and we've got book four, Castle of Wizardry, book five, Enchanter's Endgame. And the other classic sci-fi, well, fantasy books that I bought, one's sci-fi fantasy, I suppose, but this one is classic fantasy for sure, which is Anne McCaffrey's first book of the Dragon Riders of Pern series. Um, just look at that. Dragons, classic fantasy, a female author, which is good. Never read any of her books. I know they're well loved, so I bought the first book because it was on there. And the other thing I bought from The Inquisitive Goblin is Tad Williams' Otherland. Now, if you've not heard of this series, I read this book must be 15, you know, 10 to 15 years ago, I don't know. And it's a series set in the future, and everyone uh, basically. It was written long before Ready Player One or anything like that, and it is lit. It's about a world which is a virtual reality world, but it's kind of real. And some people from all around different places in the world, in the future, in Earth, they meet in this virtual reality. They have to go on a quest in this virtual reality world. Sounds pretty cool, right? And I just remember it stuck in my mind. I don't remember all the details, but I remember that the world building was so rich and so intricate that. I saw this on an Inquisitive Goblin, I just had to get a copy because somehow mine's gone missing. Um, so there you go. So those are the books that I bought at Waterstones and from the Inquisitive Goblin. I hope you enjoyed this, my first book haul video. If you like videos like this, let me know in the comments. If you liked it enough to subscribe and you've never subscribed before, please click like, subscribe, maybe comment, ring the bell. Hopefully I'll see you again here soon. Bye.